The Book of Mormon's Rejection and Redefinition of the Word Grace In 2 Nephi chapter 25, verse 23, it says, For we labor diligently to write, to persuade our children and also our brethren to believe in Christ and to be reconciled to God. For we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do. This seems to indicate that grace is somehow linked to what we do. Romans 11 verse 6 very clearly spells out and very clearly, I believe, defines grace as being something that is totally unrelated to anything that we do. Romans 11 verse 6 says, And if by grace, then is it no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. What this is saying in simpler terms is that grace and works are absolute opposites. If it has anything to do with works, it's earned. It has not a thing to do with grace. And if it has a thing to do with grace, it don't have anything to do with works at all. Because grace is unmerited undeserved and unearned. One of the best pictures that I could just think of right off, kind of, to show grace would be if somebody were to walk up to me and deck me in the nose as hard as they could and turn and run off, just thinking what a great thing it was to have just busted my nose wide open. And in turning to run off, they kind of mess up and misstep and they fall down and end up hurting themselves very badly, maybe tripping over a curve or something like that. And I'm sitting here with a busted nose and they're laying there and maybe going to bleed to death and die because they've got themselves in serious trouble with the fall that they've had. And I go ahead and ignore my nose for a little bit and start to help them with the needs that they have and get them the help they need, that would be a picture of grace. The Bible teaches that while we were enemies of God, that God was sending His Son to die on the cross for our sins. It teaches that while we're fighting against God, God is doing everything possible to bring us back to a right relationship with himself. That is what grace is all about. We're not deserving. We're not earning. We're, we're doing exactly the opposite of what we should be doing to get to heaven. The Bible teaches that all of our righteousnesses in the sight of God are as filthy rags. That's not talking about the wicked things we do. That's the righteous things we do are filthy rags in the eyes of God. Of course, Numbers 23 and 19 makes it very clear God is not some man. You know, Romans chapter 1 very clearly teaches that man's idolatry leads him to make God into some worthless man. Now, God did become a man in Jesus Christ, but God is not some man who became a god. God entered into human flesh and became a man. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 say, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If we could work and earn our salvation, or could do some type of something to help to to deserve or to earn grace, we'd all be up in heaven a bunch of boasters and braggers. Well, yeah, he got in, but I did better than him, you know. And it's not pride that gets us into heaven. The Bible says pride goes before a fall and humility comes before honor. It's not a pride issue where we say that we're saved by grace. That's a humble issue. Because that means we don't deserve it, we didn't deserve it, we didn't earn it, we don't, you know. 
Romans 3 and 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If we've come short of the glory of God, we don't deserve heaven. We deserve hell. Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. What we earn when we sin is death. Hell, separation from God forever in eternity. You know, the Bible teaches that all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. The Bible's very clear. It doesn't matter what our sin is. If there's any sin attached to us when we die, we go to hell. That's it. God doesn't dwell with sinners. He's too holy. He's too righteous. You know, that's why Jesus died. He not only died to take away our sin, he died to give us some righteousness, some real righteousness that isn't filthy rags. Moroni chapter 10 verse 32 says that we're supposed to deny ourselves of all ungodliness and then that if we do deny ourselves of all ungodliness, and love God with all of our heart, then is His grace sufficient for us. Grace is not something earned. It's not something deserved. The Book of Mormon totally rejects grace. It totally redefines grace. Because grace has absolutely nothing to do with what we earn. We all have earned hell. We all deserve hell. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. John chapter 3 verses 18 and 36, both verses teach very clearly he that hath the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. You know, the wrath of God is on us if we don't have Christ in our lives, if, if his blood has not been applied to our sin. We're totally separated from God and his wrath abides on us. If we've accepted Christ and the death that he paid, for our sins on the cross will go to heaven when we die by grace through faith. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 teaches, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Salvation is not by our power, it's by God's power.